Namaste. So, <laughs> are you enjoying the secret group? Or are you feeling shocked? I know a number of you came here expecting to uh, show your uh, Neo-Advaita credentials and be validated for them. But instead, what happened? Huh? It's like going into the bank to take out a loan on the bridge you bought and the bank goes, I'm sorry, sir, but this deed is bogus. <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar with American culture, there's an old scam, a hustle, a con, where new immigrants would come to New York and some street hustler would sell them the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> really, it happened. <laughs> So, of course, you'd have a big fancy piece of paper, you know. You are the proud owner of the Brooklyn Bridge. It's hardly been used. <laughs> but, of course, they just got taken for all their money. So the same thing can happen in spiritual life. You can be sold the idea that here is the highest teaching and here is the greatest guru. And this is so powerful that just by hearing about it and making some mental adjustment, you attain the highest realization. And it's all bullshit. I, I could give a couple of examples. Um, Ramana Maharshi. Well, no, first... First of all, people like Papaji and Muji and even Krishnamurti and, of course, Osho and people like that. They're like people who climb up on the roof uh, and then pull the ladder up after them. So they're up there on the roof going, hey, it's great up here, you know, come on up. Uh, but there's no ladder. Oh, you don't need any ladder because actually everything is the roof. It's all one. And wherever you are is the roof uh, because you and I are one. So it's all the same. So <laughs> if you believe that, of course, you're insane. So what really happens is these guys convince you that up is down. And then they take you down the stairs into the basement and leave you there. Whereas Ramana Maharshi, or even better, Shankaracharya, is like someone who climbs up on the roof and then throws you a rope. Here, take this rope, climb up on the roof. Yeah, it's going to be hard work, but at least you have a way up. You see, or again, it's, it's like it's like a person is <clears throat> dressed up for Halloween as a, a bird colonel, you know, a full, full highest military rank. And then he runs into an actual military man. And maybe the military man isn't, isn't even a colonel. Maybe he's, you know, just a, a master sergeant or somebody like that who's been around for a long time and knows everything, right? And one of the things about the military that is really good, actually, is that every officer has to know and be able to perform the jobs of every man under his command. So... The old sergeant meets the phony colonel and he goes, um, wait a minute, are those ribbons and medals real? They don't make sense. See, there's a certain code in those ribbons. There's a certain inscription on those medals and if it's not there, and then he went, hey, wait a minute, these are plastic. 
Is this uniform? Man, this isn't regulation. There's something wrong here. Can you shoot a rifle? No. Can you run a, a six-minute mile? No. Can you dig a trench with nothing but a foxhole digger? No. Can you get, get through a barbed wire, razor wire uh, fence? No. I mean, can, can you fly a helicopter? No. <laughs> How the hell did you ever get to be a colonel? Well, of course, he's not a colonel. So the people who claim enlightenment by neo Dweta are like the phony colonel. It's just a Halloween costume. It's not a real uniform, and they don't have the skills. Huh? In fact, they're just, they're, they're just a buck private. Huh? They just came on base for the first time. But they think they're the head of the army. Well, there's going to be a rude shock. I, I mean, I feel for you. I can understand. It must be terrible to think, oh, man, I got the highest teaching. And then find out somebody that has 57 different arguments of why you don't. And all of them make tremendous sense. Huh? There are 64 devotional arts. How many of them can you even name? Huh? Do you have a guru? Uh, that's like for a soldier. Huh? Every soldier has a commanding officer, a CO. If you don't have a CO, what kind of soldier are you? Huh? You're phony. So if you don't have a guru, and don't tell me somebody like Muji is your guru or, or Osho, <laughs> you have to pay them. Look, I lived in my guru's ashrams for more than 12 years without paying a dime. Huh? I mean, I, I had kind of a special situation because I was introduced by my music teacher who was a fellow Calcutta Rasika Bhakta, uh, a special intimate friend. But still, see, that was my karma. I earned that. What have you earned? Do you know the prayers? Do you know the mantras? Do you know the special tunes and what hours of the day they are to be sung? Do you know how to set up the worship, how to arrange the items and articles, what order they're supposed to be offered in, the mantras they're supposed to be offered with? Huh? Do you know any of that? That's the first thing you learn when you walk in the temple. I mean, besides cleaning the floor and stuff like that. And washing the pots. <laughs> but as far as worship, as far as actual spiritual activities go. Do you know how to read and pronounce Sanskrit? Do you know the different meters of Sanskrit poetry? And how to pronounce them? And what they mean? Huh? Do you know the, the well, we talked about the four levels, the Chatur Darshanam. Huh? Do you know which one you're on? Can you explain why? You see? You're busted. Now admit that you're busted. Huh? Or if you're not honest enough to admit that you've been, you've been scammed, you've been cheated, you've been lied to, you've been conned, huh? you've been hustled, admit it. Otherwise, you don't belong here. You don't have the integrity to be here. I'm going to give some very powerful spiritual methods here. So unless a person is participating honestly with integrity, then it's like you don't deserve those things. And if you try to use them, Without authorization, they will harm you. Uh, Mahaparyava uses the example of working with electricity. 
You have to have insulated boots, insulated gloves, special insulated tools, or the electricity will shock you, or harm you. Huh? I know, for example, stupid people who chant the Gayatri mantra without any authorization or initiation or instruction or anything. Huh? There's that horrible... Horrible. It's the wrong meter. It's the wrong tune. It's the wrong scale. It's the wrong everything. If you chant that uh, version of the Gayatri Mantra, it'll do nothing. I told this story, I think, the last time, about the king and the minister, about Gayatri Mantra. Huh? So you have to get the Gayatri Mantra from someone with the authority to give it. Otherwise, it won't do anything. Or worse, it will be an offense against the mantra. And every time you chant the mantra, you just increase your suffering. Because this mantra is very powerful. If you handle it wrong, it will hurt you. And that's true of so much, not only spiritual, but even mundane technology. So, you know, what to speak of this stuff. You know? Try to understand. We're not fooling around here anymore. That's why I created this private Sangha, was to keep out the riffraff. So if you want to defend Papaji and Muji and even Krishnamurti or Osho or people like that, you know, you don't belong here. Kindly let me know and I will delete your account. Or if you don't participate, there's a number of people, I mean, the thing has been up now for several days, there's a number of people who haven't posted anything. Well, that's not going to continue for too much longer. Uh, you have to participate, because I have to be able to know how you're doing, where you are, what your issues are. Now, I mean, on the other hand, there are several members of this group who I've had wonderful deep, heartfelt conversations with, you know, private conversations. And, you know, this is <laughs> what makes the whole thing worthwhile. All the work that goes into it, you have no idea <laughs> how much work, preparation, and expense even I've gone to to prepare for this. You know, I don't need any of this stuff. It's all internal with me. I've been doing it now for more than 50 years. So, you know, I'm like the master sergeant who knows all the rules and regs by heart. He doesn't need the manual. He doesn't need the, the rule book. Huh? So in the same way, somebody who's been on this path for a long, long, long time and knows all the practices and procedures and philosophies, knows where to look everything up, you know. Have you read the original Bhagavad Gita and Shankara's commentary? Have you read the original Vedanta Sutra? Have you read any of the Shakta scriptures or Shaiva scriptures? Huh? The Upanishads? The Puranas? Mahabharata? Huh? Have you read any of that stuff? If not, you don't have any idea what you're talking about. Uh, just admit it, be honest, and we can work things out. Uh, otherwise, like, I get lost, okay? This is not kid stuff anymore. This is for the people who want the real thing and are willing to work for it, okay? So you must be doing the practices. Otherwise, you're not bona fide. You're not a real yogi. Uh, you're just a tourist. Yankee, go home. So, this is for sincere people only. And that's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, you know, I don't need to be making all this effort. 
So please get your act together or hit the road. Om Tat Sat. Do you know what that means? I should do a video on it. Aung Harihi Aung.